del autor publicado en Harvard, Business Week, TechCrunch, VentureBeat y GigaOM es Larry Chiang. The mentorship component to editing your project startup, the, the, the key components include reaching out and being able to be influenced by a mentor. That's what the focus of this lecture is to do, is to leverage mentorship so that way in resuscitating this cadaver of a startup that we're working on, we want to be able to coattail some awesome mentor. That's why we spend time networking. That's why we spend time previously copy pasting, is we want to be able to coattail a mentor that maybe was neglected or a mentor that has not yet been met, but is probably in the ether wanting to help us. Human protocol interfacing. I giggle because it sounds like a string of jargon, but never before in history has it been easier to network with and match up protocols with a potential superstar mentor. Remember there's superstar mentor, cohort mentor, junior mentor, and default mentor. The start that you're editing right now, CS183 Lecture 5 editing, maybe they didn't get mentored as well as they could have been because with proper mentorship, the only conclusion that you can come from that is I need to hand you money because you're so great of a mentee. The mentor-mentor dynamic is hugely beneficial. We want a coattail. You're right now editing a startup that died. One of the reasons that it died is there was a mentor-mentee breakdown. Now, why did this break down? I have a theory is that most of the time when you're doing Facebook messaging, all the messaging ratio is one to one. When you're networking with a mentor, as I referenced the Evan Reyes, he kept on messaging until his mentor reciprocated with one message. I have the theory that founders get so demoralized at how the world used to be. Before you were a founder, it was one to one ratio. Now that you're a founder, the ratio is completely out of whack. The rest messaging ratios are sometimes 17, 18, 20 messages before you even get one message of reciprocity, one message in return. That's how the ratios work. It's tough. Say the word stalking, what do you think of? You think, oh, it's creepy. Oh, it's a person who's trying to message me all the time, liking my stuff on Instagram, which I hate by the way. I don't hate liking, I hate Instagram. Uh, just somebody who's creeping on you. By definition of creeping, the messaging ratio is typically two to one, three to one, or four to one. It's not 20 to one the way that entrepreneurship works. That's why you're editing something that's dead because they don't realize that 20 to one is actually tolerable. 100 to one is much more normal. There are timeless number of examples where the messaging ratio was 17,000 to one, the time between two customers. That's part of DTTDS, do things that don't scale, but have momentum. Mentorship, there's a weird charm dynamic, a weird social dynamic, where when you, the Ivy douchebag, are trying to network with a janitor or a service staff, and that charm component is a really unique uh, dynamic because not a whole lot of people can genuinely uh, do that. Where one of the reasons that you're working on a cadaver of a startup is because those IBDBs did not want to reach down and dumb themselves down and get dirty with having to talk to the masses where when you talk to the masses, you'll get one, two, or a 6% close ratio. So they just feel dirty. That's what we're doing right now, is we're getting dirty in doing some of this editing work. Fees and costs associated with mentorship. We've got a pop quiz question, which we'll answer. How much in the big short, this, the investor Ben, how much did Ben the mentor charge the two kids who were working out of a garage? The answer is zero. A lot of mentors work just for free, and that's just a dynamic that happens. I was mentored for free and that's just there's a there's a freeness to it you just need to reciprocate with a thank you note or some kind of small recognition and if you're foreign and 
your parents came from a war ravaged rapey the neighbor kind of country you're going to probably have issues with it but that's just how america and silicon valley works by thanking a mentor who helps you for free i bring up dttds bhm do things that don't scale but have momentum along with uh, chapter five of my mentor's book what they don't teach you at harvard business school book because from the view that I see, mentorship is so disregarded and so not leveraged that it's a crime. And that's why you're editing something that died because mentorship just wasn't even tapped and wasn't even like properly coattailed. And coattail is like drafting behind somebody who's going really fast we get to go faster. So other people say standing on the shoulders of giants. So that's part of doing things that don't scale is the mentor mentee dynamic. Sam Houston or freaking Confucius, the new business mortality rate has not declined. It stayed, it's maintained constant at around 80%. It's 80% for econ majors. It's 80% for ex convicts. It's 80% for Ivy douchebags. It's 80% for Stanford kids. I don't understand why it's at 80%. Uh, I just don't. And that's what this portion of mentorship is, is meant to shine a light on. Because if you studied CS, and that's, that's why you're doing CS 23 edit, is that you can't kill something that's already dead. There's only upside. That's the mentorship component of it, where you sprinkle in some mentorship and then watch that cadaver flower grow. The Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, mentor mentee dynamic, that's real. There's a book that you should get. It's called Great Artists, Good Artists Copy, Great Artists Steal. I think that's about how it goes. Uh, Austin Kleon, Austin like the town, Austin Kleon, K's and Kilo, L E O N, Austin Kleon, page 40. Talks about how Kobe Bryant coattailed Michael Jordan. And the start that you're editing that's dead, they definitely didn't coattail something or else it wouldn't be dead. It'd be still coattailing on some other thing that's awesome. It takes a little bit of charm, a little bit of uh, willingness to bow down to a mentor, and it's just how Silicon Valley works. Homework, homework, homework. Easiest homework ever. Thank the teacher that helped you get into Stanford. Thank the teacher that got you into whatever Ivy douchebag school that you currently go to. Have you ever thanked them? Do you? You probably haven't. And that's heartbreaking because that teacher's making like no money and your little douchebag's life is thinking about making 200K. And when you get to CS183E Lecture 20, I'm going to show you how to retire on the job. Meanwhile, they're schlepping you know, textbooks and grading papers uh, for a bunch of thankless, snot-nosed kids. That's why I'm not in education. I hate it. Thank your random teacher. That's your homework.